There is an MIT study that the AI community has been frothing over lately. Let's talk about that MIT paper that says people who use ChatGPT have brain rot. This study, this your ChatGPT addiction is rotting your brain. Do research on how dumb AI is making us. And you might be wondering, is it true? Is ChatGPT making me dumber? Is brain rot not only doom scrolling, but also AI use? Should I just stop using ChatGPT to save my critical thinking skills? Should I be scared? Well, before I answer that, let's take a quick look at the study. So MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, by the way, did a study and titled it Your Brain on ChatGPT. Quite the headline, if you ask me. And trust me, the news just loves headlines like this. They're just itching to fearmonger and clickbait you into oblivion. Anyway, this study investigated the cognitive impact of AI tools, in this case specifically ChatGPT and only the 4.0 model, for essay writing in an educational context. The researchers wanted to explore cognitive engagement, so how does writing with AI affect brain activity, ownership and originality, does AI-assisted essays lack personal creativity, and cognitive debt. Does frequent AI use lead to impaired cognitive skills? So they got 54 university students from the Boston area. That's it, 54. Ages 18 to 39. And they split them into three groups. The ChatGPT group, who used ChatGPT 4.0 for the essays, the Google group, who could only use Google as a tool to help them write, and the Brandling group, who just freeballed it and used no AI tools and just barbaric, pure, original thought. Ugh. These students had four sessions of short essays to write. The fourth session involves swapping methods for some participants to test adaptability. In the fourth session, the ChatGPT group switched to brain only, and the brain only group switched to being able to use ChatGPT. And that ChatGPT group is also called the LLM group, by the way. So in that fourth session, LLM to brain, and brain to LLM. They tracked brain activity across these four sessions using EEG scans. An EEG scan, or electroencephalogram, is a test that measures the electrical activity inside your brain. In super simple terms, your brain is full of tiny electrical signals firing all the time as you think, move, and feel. An EEG uses small sensors, known as electrodes, placed gently on your head to pick up these signals. These signals are recorded as wavy lines that doctors and researchers analyze. It's completely painless and safe, and it's often used to understand brain activity, sleep patterns, or detect issues like seizures. In the context of this MIT study, the EEG measured how much people's brains were actively engaged when writing essays with or without ChatGPT. They also used natural language processing, human graders, and an AI judge, and participant interviews for further analysis. So, what did they find? Is there a correlation between ChatGPT use and brain rot? Yeah, we're proper fucked. No, I'm just kidding. Here's the findings. The ChatGPT group had reduced brain activity compared to other groups. Oh my gosh. The highest brain engagement was the brain-only group. Moderate engagement was the search engine group, the Google group. And the lowest engagement was the LLM or ChatGPT group. I mean, who would have guessed if you use AI to write your essays, you're using your brain less? I mean, that's groundbreaking. In session four, they found that LLM to brain participants struggled to regain full brain engagement without AI. The brain to LLM participants showed increased brain activity integrating AI suggestions effectively. So the group that was able to use AI and then went to just using their brain found it hard to do a task with their brain that took them seconds with AI. The ones who used AI as a tool after using their brain had amplified brain power. Surprisingly, they also found that ChatGPT-assisted essays were repetitive, generic, and less creative. I mean, that's weird. The AI essays were less original. Also, the ChatGPT group participants had difficulty recalling or quoting really any of their own essays. So the ChatGPT group felt less ownership for their work. Hmm. Oh, and get this. The ChatGPT group progressively put less effort into essay writing. They often resorted to copying prompts directly into ChatGPT without meaningful engagement. So of course, you gotta add potential laziness to the list. So clearly you can see how many of these findings are a bit obvious and expected. And like many other studies, there are many clear limitations to this study. I'm sure you picked up on a few of them, but I'll list them out for you. There was a small sample from a specific area. It was a controlled artificial setting, meaning the context and the essay tasks likely differ in real-world use, only one AI tool, in fact only one AI model, 
of one AI tool, ChatGPT 4.0, was used. They use an EEG scan, which is useful, but is also limited for deeper brain insights. And of course, I think it's pretty obvious that this study is possibly biased towards confirming the cognitive debt theory because it tested obvious AI reliance scenarios. So maybe you caught that term or theory I just said, cognitive debt. Well, cognitive debt is the concept introduced by the researchers that basically says that over-reliance on AI may weaken cognitive skills over time. I think this term alone is the best finding or result of this highly trending study because it raises healthy concerns about habitual cognitive offloading, leading to potentially decreased long-term cognitive abilities like critical thinking. This term and the discussion around it is important for a few psychological reasons. One is active versus passive learning. Active learning strengthens memory and understanding. Passive learning, being AI-generated work in this case, risks shallow understanding. Second is neuroplasticity, the good old use it or lose it adage. Your brain needs consistent, challenging tasks to strengthen its cognitive functions. Over-reliance on AI might hurt that. Third is the idea of thinking about thinking, or better known as metacognition. Excessive reliance on AI risks reduced self-awareness and reflection on one's own thinking processes. Fourth is the sense of ownership and motivation. Reduced cognitive effort from AI reliance means lower engagement, retention, and personal ownership of ideas. And lastly, fifth is to use critical thinking as defense. Critical thinking is essential in a world filled with misinformation and quick answers. So it is true that cognitive effort is vital for brain growth and mental resilience. No doubt there. Okay. Let's get philosophical right quick. As people start using a tool that might end up, or already is, smarter and better than us at everything, then the problem of AI is not AI itself, but our over-reliance on it. Like my mom always says, too much of anything is bad for you. <laughs> and that is still one of the truest statements I've ever heard. So discipline, willpower, and most importantly, temperance will become even more important and valuable skills to develop and have. Another vital skill that will become extremely valuable that you should start developing right now is knowing when to engage your brain and your critical thinking skills to be able to determine, should I write this first and then have AI make it all pretty? Or should I let AI do this thing and then I just review it? So that's the end of my little philosophical bout. But the key takeaway you can take from that is that AI isn't the enemy, passivity is. So no more teasing and leading you on. Let's tackle the question that is the title of this video. Is ChatGPT destroying your critical thinking skills? No, AI itself isn't destroying your critical thinking skills. Your habits around AI could. And I said could, not will. Many, many more studies and meta-analyses need to be done before we could even consider saying will. But if we could just use our critical thinking skills now, with a little logic and irrational thinking, I think it's safe to come to the conclusion that heavy over-reliance and use of AI over a long period of time will likely hurt your cognitive skills. But then again, who really knows? Because no one knows what the future holds, and I'm sure they were saying the same thing back when the radio came out, TV, smartphones, and the internet. But I suppose it's possible. So to prevent your critical thinking skills from diminishing, here's a solution. Don't outsource thinking and all cognitive tasks and questions that you have to your second brain that we all have now that is AI. Instead, use AI to amplify your brain power, not replace it. If you regularly challenge your thinking and use AI as a supplement, not a substitute, then you are safe from cognitive debt. So you can relax, ChatGPT isn't melting your brain, but your brain will really thank you for doing some of the thinking yourself. So to wrap this all up, unfortunately social media and the news took an okay study and played on people's fears and worries, and then it went viral. By the way, that happens all the time and will keep happening all the time. So stay vigilant and a bit skeptical. There's a link in the description of 30 smarter ways to use ChatGPT to empower your brain. It's free. It's a short read and a short email that I'll send you each day for the next 30 days. So check that out if you want. And to end off here, YouTube is a sly dog and picks the best video from my channel that it thinks you will like. And you can find that video right here. So you should click on it. All right, thanks for watching. I know you learned a lot. I sure did research in this video. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.